Hello everyone and welcome back once again to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. It's been a while since there's been any, well, any space or any real exploration, so I think it's about time I got back on with that again. But first let's have a quick rundown of what's been going on since the last episode. I've talked quite a bit recently about trying to get my, um, a big getting my defences up, built up and supporting the bottom side and sort of the west side of the base. And I've now finished that off. Um, it took quite a long time, but I've got it all, all done now so I can move on. So as you can see, I've got my standard now walls with, with the flame turrets in, running all the way down here, across here, across here, and all the way up round around the east side of it as well and up to up to about here there's this chunk along here that isn't really isn't done yet but to be honest I've had quite enough of doing that for now and I want to go off and do something else I have also cleared out all of the biters from inside here as well uh, that was also that was a surprisingly big job so this entire internal area is now theoretically safe there's a couple of bits of wall I've not cleared up yet like that one and one of my outposts here but otherwise I'm done with that and I'm moving on I have built up a couple of extra copper mines in the areas I've freed up now. So there's one big one here that's, um, this is a nice 10 million patch of copper. So I've got decent sized solar arrays around here providing them with power. And then the um, the mines feeding into a station as normal. Because I, I built this one up along with this one here uh, because I was starting to run very, very low on copper. And I've got space for another one here that I've not finished off yet. Uh, so that it seems to be the thing I'm getting through the most of at the moment, and I think it's a lot of the rocketry stuff I'm doing and a lot of electronicsy stuff, all requires enormous quantities of copper. So I've built up some more mines for that. Another thing I've done, which was uh, solved a problem I I was well I, I knew I had but wasn't sure what to do about. I had my um, what's going on here? Okay, you go. <laughs> this is this is um, got confused. Let's send it around there. Okay, so this is my um, ammunition supply train for resupplying all of the outposts. I've talked about it before, but the idea is it will trundle around and load up any outpost that needs it with more ammunition, more repair packs, walls, fuel, and uh, oil for the um, uh, for the flamethrowers. The problem I had was I was using um, turning stations off, which I've done over here. That's why this one's gone red. Um, and the way this works, I can't. Oh, so I can select it. Is it's set to enable or dis disable based on if any of the um, inputs are less than zero. And in order to make that work, I've got this uh, combinator here which outputs negative numbers of all of the things I want to have at the point I wanted to cut off and say I need more of it. And that, all of those are linked together and then to the station. So if any of these drop below, um, sorry, if any of these get above zero after having the number from this one added on, then the station turns on, it goes from being red to being white, the train heads out there, reloads it. The problem is, if all of your trains are deactivated, then, the tr sorry, if all of your stations are deactivated, then the train looks at its um, list of uh, destinations and, go, and, and it'll just skip over the, that one and move on to the next, uh, move, skip over this one and move back to this one. So because I have two stations in here, the train was just shuttling back and forth endlessly between these two, which is a bit of a waste of fuel and it also creates a bit more congestion on the on the network. Now I was doing a stream with one of my friends um, a couple of days ago, um, and he said, and, and somebody in the, um, in the in the chat on that mentioned that apparently if you set your stations up instead, rather than turning off when they um, when they're full, if, if like this one up here, you set it to set the train limit to zero when it's full, then the trains don't do the endless shuffling backwards and forwards. So what I've done up here is I've got all of these. Um, including the, I've got all these fed, linked together in the same way, going up to this with this combinator that has exactly the same negatives in it. But now it goes into this decider combinator, and that takes a look at the numbers that are coming in. And if any of them are less than zero, then it outputs a one on the um, a one one tick, I think it is. Yes, yeah, so it's one tick. So the station then looks at the number of ticks that are on the network and sets that to, sets the train limit to be equal to that. This means that instead of the station being disabled using this option, it ha it's just set to, set to a limit of zero instead. And f due to sort of vagaries in the way the game works, that means I'm getting destination full pop-ups off this train instead of no destination. And that means it just sits there waiting for the station to be open. And I believe, I haven't actually seen this work yet because all of my outposts have been remarkably peaceful and I don't think I've needed to send a train out to any of them. But I'm reasonably optimistic that when one of these ticks over to needing a train the train is going to come out here and dump um, and then do basically do what I wanted to do rather than what it was doing before so that should work quite well 
I hope. It remains to be seen whether it works perfectly, but I'm I'm optimistic and reasonably confident. I'm actually quite surprised that I only needed to do this on one of the stations. I was prepared and expecting to have to go out and do this for every single one, uh, but it turns out that one of them was, was enough to tri uh, trigger it over to that and, um, and make it start working, so I'm quite happy with that. Another thing I've done, so as you remember from a pre uh, last episode or the one before, I forget exactly when it was, um, my umbrella defence got overwhelmed by the, uh, the sheer amount of uh, coronal mass ejection that was going on, and that was because it ran out of power. All of the batteries went flat, and it just went and it just collapsed and couldn't couldn't cope. So I've set up this massive building site over here that is, in theory at least, putting out enormous numbers more of these. Um, uh, what do you call it? It's accumulators to store far more power. So hopefully it'll there'll be enough to keep it running. Now, as you can see, if I zoom out a bit, you can see how much of this is still purple. The purple stuff is is areas that haven't been built yet. The grey ones are the ones that have been built. Um, this isn't inside my RoboPort catchment area. It's a separate one, um, and that's because I don't want the robots flying all the way from over here to here, back and forth to to do the building because it'll just take them forever. It, it's it's not worth it. So what I've been doing every so often is going over there with a train full of them and dumping them into these uh, into these uh, crates here, and then the bots that are in this one, there's 139 of them apparently, will then fly them out and do all the building for me. And that does work, except I've had a massive shortage of the um, of the accumulators. I'm just not building them quickly enough. So I've expanded this out here. It's making it making them a bit faster. That has unfortunately showed that I'm rather short of batteries, which is because I'm short of sulfur, which is just simply because I'm not building enough of it. I need to put in some more chemical plants to do that. And I haven't yet. <laughs> so that's on the old to-do list. But I've decided not to worry about that quite so much for now and get because I want to do something something different. As you can see, the bots are flying over. They're picking up all of these accumulators and taking them off to where they're needed. Um, but they're just yeah, they're just not being made quickly enough. What where they are being taken to is up here by this rocket, because this gets on to um, on what I'm planning for my uh, next expedition, shall we say. Now what I've been doing, I'm just going to save at this point in case I've screwed something extremely important up. Uh, what I've been doing here is I've been filling this rocket up with all of the things that I'm going to need for my next expedition off to a planet, no, to a moon rather called Frost. Uh, it's rather appropriately named because this is where I'm going to get cryonite from, which is some sort of. So, in the same way that vulcanite is basically a hot rock, it's certainly something you can use in various different ways, and it gives out loads and loads of heat, which makes it suitable for making it into rocket fuel. Or I, I believe you can also use it for um, smelting as well, although I haven't actually looked into that yet. Cryonite is sort of the opposite of that. It's something you can use when you want to chill things. So, one of the recipes I'm looking at is this one here, which allows me to take. Um, basically allows me to take mined cryonite uh, and combine it with uh, with water in order to make in order to make sort of big chunks of ice out of it and these are things i can then use the um, delivery cannon to send to miokin now if we have a look at miokin um, up here now the problem i'm running into with miokin is this process here for making the vulcanite takes quite a lot of water um, it, because you need to wash it to turn it into into the, into washed vulcanite which you can then process on and on and on and on and then to, uh, turn into rocket fuel or put into the delivery cannon so I need to have got past that stage the problem is I'm delivering rock water at the moment in these barrels and that's terrible the barrels don't hold very much water so you can't transmit you can't send very much in each of the capsules you launch and you've got the barrels left over as well and this this chest is nearly full now so I, I, I could send a bit more water over there but not very much more before that fills up now, I could get around that by having a recycling plant next to it and, uh, and just turning the barrels back into steel, which packs a lot more neatly. And, yeah, I mean, that, that would work. I could, I, could do, I could run it for a bit longer that way, but then I'd have, eventually I'd run into the same problem. I'd have an enormous quantity of steel and nothing to do with it. And, yeah, I could use a delivery cannon to send it back to Norvis. I could make it into something else. I could stockpile it. There are things I could do with it, and it would solve the problem for a little while, but it isn't really what I would consider a long-term solution. So, and I'd also still have the problem that the barrels don't hold very much water, so I'd be having to send a lot of them through. So what I plan to do instead is set up a system on uh, on Frost that's going to build up uh, the delivery cannon capsules, put the ice into them, and then launch them over here instead. And then I can use a chemical plant to to thaw the ice out and then put it back into the in, into into the system. And that should, I believe, that should work quite nicely. Um, it's going to require quite a lot of extra building work because. This is the recipe required in order to make the um, 
in order to make the delivery capsules. And there's rather a lot of extra stuff that goes into this. So I'm going to, um, so I'm going to need to put together quite a large set of infrastructure on um, on Frost in order to build these up. That said, in the long term, I want to do the same on Miokin as well and start building the delivery cannon capsules there instead of just bringing them all up by rocket and shoving them in this these crates here in order to be passed across eventually by the bots as I need them. Uh, so it, it's sort of an, an ongoing process, but it's, uh, th there is a, there is a plan, should we say? Put it that way. There's, there's, there's a plan, and I think it sh I think it should work. But as you can see, in order to get the um, the delivery cannon capsules made, I'm going to need a supply of water. That's not a problem. I can just pump it out of the ground. Oh, that does remind me. I need to take some pumps up though. Uh, I'm going to need coal. I'm going to need iron ore. I'm going to need stone, and I'm going to need copper ore. And I think those are all the sort of the raw ingredients I need um, in order to get it in order to get it going. But I am also going to need to do coal liquefaction, and that's why I've got quite a lot of this heavy oil in here, which I can take up with me, and and that should allow me to get the coal liquefaction bootstrapped and and started up. So it'll it'll start allowing me to make uh, make all the plastics and and oil and coals and stuff like that. No, oil, plastic, sulfur, out of um, out of coal instead of out of out of mining oil. So, the theory is, this rocket here should have all of the stuff I need in order to get this base set up. I've got lots and lots of belts, hopefully it's going to be enough, underground belts, splitters and so on. I think I might take some more belts actually, that's only that's 4,000, but if the stuff's a bit spread out it might not be enough. Uh, I've got lots of inserters, power poles, I've got some delivery canyon capsules just to get, get me started. Uh, some boilers, salt solar, I, I think, I'm pro is that going to be enough solar? I'm not sure. Miners, that's definitely not enough miners. I need some more of those. Uh, so, and oh, and then the very important things. I've got a, um, a rocket silo in here, rocket landing, rocket stuff in here somewhere. So, okay, there's a rocket uh, silo so I can get back, and a rocket landing pad for next time I go over there. A spare space capsule. I probably don't need this. I don't know why that's in there, but it's just sort of there out of habit. Fuel refinery so I can make the fuel to go in the rocket. Rocket section so I can uh, packed up so I can uh, make a new cargo rocket in order to get back. I don't want to be stuck on another planet. And then a massive quantity of fuel in order to fuel the rocket in order to get me back. Now, this is probably a waste of space really because I can make uh, fuel on the other planet out of oil. And that's something I've considered doing back here on Norvis. But it seems like a bit of a faff, and I, 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 I don't know. I don't really know why I haven't done that, but I haven't. Uh, I've got some cliff explosives. Maybe I should have some more of those as well. So I was saying, I need more miners. Let's put them in all of them in here. Yeah, that's quite a lot. That that should be enough to get me started at least. I don't think it's going to be enough for the long term, but it'll get me started. And uh, what was it? Oh yes, it was um, uh, offshore pumps. I might just build some of those because I can't be bothered to wait the amount of time it takes them to be delivered up here. I can build them in my pockets. That's fine. Right. Was there anything else I said I needed more of? I kind of fancy some more cliff explosives. You can, can never have enough cliff explosives. Okay, I think I'm going to call that everything, and I'm going to hop in this rocket. So I'm going to hop in the rocket. Have I got enough fuel yet? Yes, I have finally got enough fuel. That was another thing I was struggling with. So all this comes back to the the problems I was having before. That rocket fuel is an enormous problem. I don't just don't. I'm not producing enough of it for what I, for what I'm getting through, and that was the whole reason I went off to Miokin in the first place. Frost anywhere? Go. Um, yeah, that was the reason I went off to um, Miokin in the in, in the uh, in the first place because I wanted more. I wanted vulcanite in order to make it to rocket fuel because the supplies I'm producing on Norvis just aren't enough. Um, I then ran into the problem of water being an issue on that, which is why I'm now heading off to Frost in an attempt to get some more water. Okay, there we go. The uh, the rocket has disintegrated, as is always the case when you when you go to a new planet. But but that was expected. No, don't do that. Bots, don't gather the stuff in yet. <laughs> it's just occurred to me something I didn't bring is um, is boxes to put all of the uh, crates to put all this stuff in. But I've got quite a lot in my inventory, so that should be enough. Right, where have I landed? Off to the so okay. So I scouted out this area and thought, okay, this looks like a reasonably suitable starting point. So of course I've landed over here. Um, there's a nice big patch of cryonite though, which is the main thing I wanted. I've got some coal. That's that's good too. Um, I'm going to use the navigation satellite uh, view surface uh, right uh, to, to scout this area out a bit so as I said I need I need coal I need cryonite I need iron and I need copper 
to get started. Now there's lots of coal up here, that's good, because I expect to be getting I expect coal and cryonite to be the main things I'm going to get through. But I am going to need iron and copper not too far away because I've only got like oh I was gonna get some more protect some more belts as well. That was what I forgot. There's a lot of cryonite up this way, but not very much else. Oh come on, scout a bit faster. It's oh there's some copper. That's a start. Now it's not the end of the world if I can't find anything up here. I can always go back down to where I um, had already scouted out and found all, this, all the useful stuff that I wanted. There's more copper. But the problem with that is anything I need, and, and, and if, I, if I do go down there, then anything I need I'm going to have to carry down there with me, which is going to be a bit of a faff. Is there actually no iron at all up this way? There's more coal, uh, more cryonite. There's a lot of cryonite around, which is nice, but... Okay, so I am here. Um, I didn't explore very far this way. I should do that. So we've got massive 19 million cryonite there, that's great. We've got four, 5 million coal there, that's pretty good too. And another 2.5 and, and 14 million over there. Okay. Uh, copper up here, which isn't too bad. And up here as well. Those, those are two decent chunks. And some down here as well, which is not, not quite as much. I'm sure there was iron up here. What's that? That's Yeah, there's, yeah. so this is a, there's a tiny amount of iron there and there. If there isn't any... Oh, there's some. Let's have a um, scout over this way a bit more. Is that the edge of a big patch? No, it's not. It's just a tiny little patch of it. Oh, no, that's just funny shape, funny coloured rock. Ah, oh, some water over here. That's that's good. I was going to need that. Or I am going to need that. Oh, no, wait, I'm over here. <laughs> right, if there isn't actually any, or any iron on this planet, that's going to be a bit of a problem. Um, yeah, there should be little bits of iron. It's just very small patches. Mm. <clears throat> Maybe this wasn't the best frost planet to come to. I have to admit, I think there was a part of me that was expecting the basic resources like iron, copper, stone, coal to be reasonably plentiful on basically every single planet. So the fact that this one has got so little iron has come as a bit of a surprise to me. Now it does have beryl. I don't know if that's valuable. I haven't found any uses for that yet. I think I might just have to get started with the iron supplies that I do have and see where I get from there. Okay, well, I've got all of the supplies I brought up with me. That should be enough to, to as I say, to get me get me started, get things get things moving a bit. I can dig up all of the cryonite I want. There's loads right here, as I said. Um, I think I'm going to have to start off with these iron little iron patches down here. There was one. Oh, there's one over here by the lake. That 24,000. That's the biggest one around. 24,000 is a big iron patch for this planet. Crikey. Um, so yeah, I'll. Who was that one? There's a 10k over there. Okay, this 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 middle point here. Actually, no. Let's let's move over this way a little bit, um, and st start about here because we've got a decent copper patch. We've got one of the few iron patches. There's a coal patch there that's not too far away. It's actually, there's a better one down there. And it's close to this water, which is very useful. Um, and it's not too far from where I've dropped, so I might be able to bring stuff over by bot if I get lazy. Um, okay, so that's my plan for the, uh, for the next episode. Um, I'm going to start working on this frost planet up here and start trying to build up the tech to get not only get myself away from here but to get everything I've brought with me um, the problem is eventually it's going I'm going to run out of iron ore because the iron ore is going to get used up making the, uh, the the delivery cap cannon capsules I'll have to see how much goes into one of those let's have a look delivery cannon capsule this one seven steel which means uh, 20, 20 iron per steel I think I should know this Five. Oh, it's only five. Okay, what did I say? Seven steel, was it? Um, yeah, okay, so 35 iron. So this iron patch of 24,000, it'll get me nearly a thousand delivery cannon capsules. I suppose that's not too bad, as long as I, it's just as long as I don't try and use it for anything and anything else. Um, building up a railway up here could be interesting, because that takes a lot of steel. Maybe we won't do that just yet. Okay, so thank you for watching. I shall um, get on with starting to dig all this stuff up. Uh, the first step is going to be to make a massive power um, power plant with all the solar panels I've brought up with me. Uh, I think I'll probably start off actually by getting bots to um, to clear up all this all this stuff and put it into into um, yellow chests for me, so I can start actually using it. Um, so 
Uh, let's that's a bot, not a bot thought. So if I put this, I can put this down here. I can give it some power, and then have a. I didn't look at how much, um, how good the electricity is on this planet. Actually, I should, I should have checked that. But uh, yeah, that gives me something to something to get on with. So let's say thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time when I should have something up and running on this planet. I'll see you then.